Well, good morning and welcome to SRPC Livestream. We're so glad that you're here with us today. My name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors at the church. And wherever you're watching from, we're excited to have you connect with us today. So thanks for being with us. Today we begin a series on justice. It's called Justice 101. And we call it that because we all need to be students when it comes to justice. And so today we're going to be students of Scripture taking a look at the Old Testament and what it has to say about God's character, especially in regard to justice. I hope that you're blessed this service, and uh, we want to also invite you to, at any point during the service, um, we're going to be praying at the end of the service for uh, those who are involved in the fires here in California. And so if you have names of people that you know that are affected by the fires, just go to the comment section on our YouTube channel, or you can email us at info at SRPC. Give us their names, and we'll pray for them by name at the end of our service today. We want to commit this time to the Lord, so let me pray for us, and then we'll enter into worship. God, we thank you for your love and your care, your compassion and your justice. Thank you that that is all a part of your character, and we pray that we would fully embrace that and then live that into a world that desperately needs all of those things and more. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather and to celebrate your love in Jesus Christ. Help that love to connect deeply with who we are and where we are today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord.
this week to start this whole series on justice. And when you look around our world, we're seeing some different definitions of what that means. And there's discord, strife. So God brought me to the verse in Romans 8, which says that we have a choice on how we react. We can react in the flesh, and when it's flesh against flesh, it's not a pretty thing. Or we can react with the Spirit and allow Him to work His gifts in us, the gifts of love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So let's just stop now and, and ask. It says in Luke 11, 13, that the Father gives the Holy Spirit to whoever asks. So today, Lord, we are asking to come. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your early tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Comes free. 
for that spirit that can fill us with love and gentleness and self-control, God, when the things that we see and that we hear just make us run hot, God. Thank you that in Luke you tell us, you remind us that we can be filled with your spirit if we ask. So God, we are asking today and we're asking that right here, right now, in this room and in the homes where the people are watching. God, that your spirit will fill this place, that you will open up the heavens, that we will see you, we will hear from you, we will feel you, God, here with us. We give you this time. Lord, we give you Mark as he comes, God. May he have your Holy Spirit just anointing him right now, God. May we hear your words. May he open up scripture, God, and we know that that never returns void. So God, may it do the work that needs to happen in our lives. And may we be like Mark said to us, that may we be students today, God. Open and willing and teachable, God. We give you this time. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, worship team. Hey, Mark's going to be up here in just a moment. Uh, just a couple things I want to share with you. First of all, I want to say, Sam, it's great to have you here. We've missed you, and her husband, Mark, is helping us with some tech today. So, uh, yeah, little touches with our SRPC community, and we're thinking about you today. One of the things that's been so helpful in this time, I'm sure for many of you, is just the strength of God's Word. One of the great uh, psalms that speaks to that is Psalm 119. And one thing that stood out to me this week in my own readings was a verse from 81. It says, my soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. Then he goes, my eyes fail. Looking for your promise, I say, when will you comfort me? Maybe some of you are feeling that way today. But here's the line that stood out to me. Though I am like a wineskin in the smoke. Maybe some of you have felt that way, and the psalmist did at some point too, the misery of just being covered by smoke and what that does to us, and then he finally says, I do not forget your decrees. Well, one of the things we do, we cry out in this time for comfort often as we have been going through many things, and there are people who are suffering in very great ways right here in our community with these fires, and as Pastor Mark mentioned earlier on, we want to invite you, if you have some folks you know have been directly affected by these fires, we'd love to pray for them by name at the end of the service, and there's a couple ways you can share that with us. One is by uh, going on the YouTube channel and chatting there and putting those names in, or if you don't have access to that, info at srpc.org. Speaking of comfort, I just want to give a brief shout out to those who helped bring comfort to our community by giving blood yesterday. We had a goal of 27. It takes a long time to get folks processed through. We had 31 people that were able to donate 32 units. It was an awesome day, and thanks. There were so many SRPCers that were part of that. Thank you for blessing and giving comfort and hope to others. Hey, um, one thing that we have coming up that hopefully not only will be a comfort to you, but will be a firm foundation in your faith is this ministry called Rooted. It is a discipleship ministry designed for groups to get together virtually and hopefully sometime soon otherwise. But you've been hearing about this. If you have not signed up yet, I encourage you to do so. It's going to start the second week of September. And this is just reaffirming and building on the foundation of God's word, prayer, serving one another, what it means to be the church, but not just to know these things, but to experience them. And I want you to hear from one voice. We've been featuring different voices. This is Pat Williams. He's going to share a bit of his journey. I'll tell you in advance, it ends a little bit abruptly because God bless Pat. He is so enthusiastic about this. He went beyond what we could do and give Mark time to share a message with us. But anyway, hear this word from Pat and then uh, Pastor Mark will be up to give us the message. Thanks. Hello, SRPC. Hey, it's Pat Williams. Uh, I'm one of the elders in our church and have been for the last couple of years. And uh, it's been quite the journey over the last couple of years and going into year three. And uh, I had the pleasure with our small group to uh, go through Rooted um, last fall. And uh, 
what a journey. Um, what an incredible journey it was with all of our small group. I was a little bit, um, I guess, taken back a little bit by it, thinking I'm not really sure that I want to do this. But after diving into it for uh, the number of weeks and the commitment of being there for the 12, 13 weeks in a row, it was an incredible journey. I mean, it was just, um, God spoke to me every week in a different way. I think he spoke to each of us in a different way. And it was just, um, it came at the right time in my life as I was going through, you know, some uh, personal things, family things, and some of those things that we were having some uh, rough spots. And boy, what a blessing it was to have that, uh, that weekly um, rooted lesson and then to do the prayer time each week that we were able to do at the end of each of one of the lessons, there was a point where it asked you to write down a prayer. And so that was just incredible. <laughs> I love hearing Pat's enthusiasm for that. And we trust that Rooted will come at just the right time for many of you as well. Uh, there are easy ways to go to our website, srpc.org, to get connected up with Rooted, find out more information, and be able to register for an online rooted group, as Mike said, beginning in September. I want to also remind you that if you know someone who's been affected by the fires and want to get their name to us, we'll pray for them by name at the end of the service today. So you can just go to that comment box on YouTube, our YouTube channel, or you could email us at info at srpc.org. We would love to pray today for those that you know that are affected by the fires. Well, today we're going to begin a series called Justice 101. And this summer has been a summer where the issue of justice has made its way to the very center of our lives and the very center of our conversations. And it ought to do that. Given all that has happened, justice ought to be in the front and in the center. And along with you, I've been watching I've been listening, I've been reflecting deeply on how I'm processing and what it means for me to understand justice, not only culturally, but biblically more deeply. In fact, what I want to share with you today is that we are, in fact, all students. That's why we call this series Justice 101. We need to be students of God's word, the Bible, the scriptures. We need to be students of ourselves and take a look deeply in our own hearts and see what's going on in there around these kinds of issues. And we need to be students of our culture to understand what our culture is saying and how we can integrate God's word and our lives in our culture together in a meaningful way. There was a prophet in the Old Testament. His name was Micah. He was around about 800 years before Jesus. And he was speaking on behalf of God to the people of his day. And I want to read to you what Micah said on God's behalf. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I'd like to begin our time with prayer. Let's pray. God, it has been nearly 3,000 years since Micah wrote those words. And you continue to show us who you are and what you ask of us. And so I pray that you would help us be people who act justly, who love mercy, and walk humbly with you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Justice matters to God, and justice is a biblical issue. The best thing that we can do as we begin to talk about justice is to decouple it from politics and policy. So oftentimes, issues of justice get linked up in those two realms, and yet what we need to do first and foremost is look at the issue of justice through the lens of the scriptures. From the very beginning of our church here at SRPC in San Ramon, California, we were a church that was committed and have been committed to God's word, to the Bible. We preach out of that every single week. It matters to us. And as we think about being anchored in the Bible, as we think about taking the Bible seriously, we also need to understand that there will be times when the Bible takes us to places that are uncomfortable for us. 
There'll be times when the Bible takes us to places that are new for us and challenging for us. And if we're people, if we're students of God's word, we can't be afraid to go there. We can't shy away from those kinds of things. And justice is one of those areas. I want to read to you from Psalm 146 today. A little background on that psalm. This psalm was written and it was intended to be a psalm of testimony in a a church service, if you will, back in the Old Testament times. It was meant to be read in church. And so I want to, since we're in church right now, I want to read Psalm 146 for you. Here's what the psalmist writes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. But blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. He is maker of the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. That's a psalm that was meant to be read in church. It was a psalm that was meant to be a testimony to the character of God. And the big theme in this psalm psalm is this, that you can trust God. And you ought to trust God God more than human beings. You ought to trust God more than rulers and systems and plans. God is trustworthy. The first part of that psalm spells out the truth that people and their plans, people and their systems make lousy saviors. But you can count on God. You can trust God. And the psalmist goes on to declare the reason that we're able to trust God. Listen to these words again. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and he gives food to the hungry. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. See, the testimony of the psalmist in church that day and even in this day is this, that God's character is just, that God gives focused attention to matters of injustice. The testimony that day is that you can trust God because he's present. You can trust God because he cares. You can trust God because he acts on behalf of the afflicted and the oppressed. That's why you can trust God more than people or policies or plans. God is committed to justice for real people in real circumstances. So, if you're oppressed or if you're hungry, if you're a foreigner or fatherless or a widow, you have a champion And your champion is the God of the universe. That's Psalm 146. Now that's great to know. But what the Bible does all throughout is it takes that truth to an even higher level. We learn in the Bible right from the very beginning that what God does is he charges his people to be a reflection of his character to the world around them. That's how the world is gonna know who God is when we as God's people reflect his character to the world. So the way that we treat the oppressed, the way that we treat the foreigner and the fatherless and the hungry and the widow, the way that we treat those is going to reveal the character of God to the world that's watching. So the prophets come along in the Old Testament and they accuse the nation and they accuse people in power of failure, of failure to reflect God's character in their world at their time. Isaiah, Amos, Ezekiel, Micah, Jeremiah, 
and all the prophets were called to speak to nations and were called to speak to people in power about their failure to reflect the character of God to the world that needs to know God. That was the role of the prophets. So God says to Jeremiah in chapter 22, Jeremiah, I have a message that I want you to take to the king. But not just the king, I want you to take this message to the king's officials, to the whole court of the king. And not just the king and his court, but I want you to take this message to every single person that walks through the gates of this land. And here's the message from Jeremiah chapter 22. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and what is right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner and the fatherless or the widow and do not shed innocent blood in this place. You see, God wants every leader and every person, every citizen of the nation to be people who reflect his character to the world. See how it goes up a notch. That's God's intent for us. Now here's what I know. I know that the Bible still speaks today. I know the prophets still speak to nations and to people in power about their failure to reflect the character of God in the world because God's word is timeless. God's word applied not only then, but God's word applies now. So we don't get to take a pass on this important cultural moment. We don't get to take a pass on these important and difficult conversations because God's word speaks just as clearly to those things today as God, God's word spoke to them back then. Ignoring injustice has never been a viable option for Christians because God himself never ignored injustice. But so many of us, when it comes to this topic, which is so difficult and so complex, we're unsure of ourselves. We're unsure and, and we're, we're not even truly identifying our own biases and, and prejudices in this area. Or if we are, we're afraid a little bit to do that. So I wanna begin today by inviting you into a conversation. A, a conversation with some important questions that we have to ask ourselves when it comes to the matter, the issue of justice. Here's some important questions to, to think about when it comes to this issue. The first is this, what thinking is God challenging? What thinking in me is God challenging? Because see, that's what God's word does if we, if we take it seriously. God's word challenges our thinking. Well, I can think of two things that, that God's word presses up against in us when it comes to this particular issue. The first is this. Justice is a challenge to the very nature of our faith. Let me explain that. Justice is a challenge to the nature of our faith because most of us view our faith in this way. We view our faith as a private and personal relationship a personal experience that we have with God. And then if we go just one circle beyond that, we view our faith as faith to be shared with people that are like-minded, that are just like us. And so we gather together with people that are just like us. But on the whole, our faith is a, a private, personal relationship with God. Justice makes that very complicated. It compels us to activate our faith in a broken and messed up world. When we do that, it disrupts us. When we do that, it's an unsettling kind of experience because the very nature of our faith, the way we look at it most times is this personal and private relationship that we have with God. I like to think of it this way. Many of you probably, like me, have this, this moment of awkwardness and, and discomfort. If you're walking down a street, say in a, in a large city, and, and a homeless person approaches you, 
and asks you for something or, or calls out to you and you do your best to, to try to avoid it or maybe even look down or look away. It's just one of those awkward moments where you, you're not really sure what to do or how to do it or if you should or what will happen if you do. It's, it's an awkward moment. Listen, if we have and feel that kind of awkwardness with one person, Imagine the disruptiveness, imagine the discomfort, imagine the awkwardness of a whole nation or a whole group of people crying out to us and saying, will you help? You see, what's awkward at an individual level is scaled immensely when it comes to this whole topic of justice. Justice is a challenge to the very nature of our faith. Secondly, God challenges any thinking in us that says that it's okay for me to enjoy the privileges that I have, and if you don't have those same privileges, you'll just have to figure it out on your own. God challenges that kind of thinking in us. That's what his word does. People who don't experience the same kind of privilege or opportunities as we do, they, well, they just sort of have to figure it out for themselves because we did. And that's exactly the attitude that the prophets of the Old Testament condemned in the nation and condemned among the leaders. You see, we cannot claim our identity as a Christian nation and not embrace the character of the God in whom we trust. You can't do that. God challenges any thinking that says it's okay to enjoy the privileges that I have and those that don't, I just need to figure it out on their own. What thinking is God challenging? Second question I wanna invite you to ask yourself is this. Could I have missed something (laughs) along the way? Could I have missed something? That's a personal question. It's a question that requires some, some personal inventory in your own life. And David in Psalm 139 is a great model for us of taking personal inventory. Remember he says in Psalm 139, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Dig in deep to me and then show me the stuff that I need to deal with. You see, what David understood about himself is that he couldn't trust himself to understand himself. He needed God's searching He needed God's work in the deep places of his life to unearth those things that needed to be dealt with. When it comes to this whole issue of justice, that's the exact thing that we need to do. Could I have missed something is a question that leads you into that kind of inventory where you invite God to say, you know what, God, I don't even know what's in here. Can you take a look and then show me so together we can walk this journey, so together we can deal with this. What am I missing? In the days that followed the murder of George Floyd, it it hit me actually pretty hard because he was murdered in the town I'm from, Minneapolis. And so as I was processing this and all the horror of what had happened, I began to think about growing up where I grew up. And I actually went back and I looked at my high school yearbook, senior year. I still have my senior year high school yearbook. And I pulled it out because here's what I knew. I knew I went to school with people of color. I knew it. I knew I went to school with black people. I knew I went to school with Asians and with Hispanics. I knew it. And so I went back to my high school yearbook and I I looked through the pictures in my senior class and there they were. They were there. Carolyn and Gail and Jeff and Greg and Robert. They were there. Jesus and Wally and Amy and Teresa, they were there in my yearbook. But here's the thing. I didn't know them. (laughs) I didn't know them. Now, I'm sure I passed them in the hallway on the way to class. And I'll bet that some of them were even in classes when the teacher called roll in class. I'm sure I heard their names, but I didn't know them. That's what I missed. I missed not knowing people that matter to God people that didn't look like me, people that were different from me, and I never knew their stories. So about a week after that, after I'd looked at my yearbook, I went for a bike ride up the Iron Horse Trail, and on the Iron Horse Trail, I saw in chalk names of people, black people that had been killed, 
written in chalk across the Iron Horse Trail. And as I rode, I read their names, Stefan and Philandro, Alton and Michelle, Freddie and Eric and Gabriella and Tamir. And I realized that I didn't know them either. And in the same way I may have walked through my, the halls and seen my high school classmates, in the same way I may have sat in class and heard their names called by a teacher, I certainly had heard these names, but I never, I never knew. And I never thought about it. And then I realized that for me, after 40 years, not much had changed. Search me, oh God. And know my heart, try me and know my thoughts and show me that stuff that's in there that I haven't even unearthed so that I can deal with it. I never knew them. What are you missing? Could you have missed something? That's an important question to ask. Third question is this. What am I gonna do? I mean, it's enormous, isn't it? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna offer some suggestions today, but... You and I both know this, that that real problems are not solved. They're never solved by checking boxes and saying, okay, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. That's not how you solve problems. You solve problems when you engage with your heart. So I'd invite you, as as I read through and, and talk through some suggestions, to ask God, even as you're listening today and even as you're reflecting on this message, to invite God to do a work of heart in you. So the first thing that we can do is we can read. Uh, there was a whole world that opened up to me that, that I, I didn't really know existed, or at least at the level that it did. This huge awareness for me is that there was a ton out there in terms of reading and writing on racial injustice and racial reconciliation, and it had never or hardly ever cross my mind or my path, but it's out there. I'd encourage you in your reading to start with scripture. In fact, if you're looking at the outline today, and you can always download it on our YouTube site or our website, if you're looking at the outline, I've given you 10 verses in the Bible that talk about justice and God's character. In fact, there are over 2,000 verses in the Bible about justice, but I've given you 10. I'd encourage you to start with God's word and see what God's word says about this issue. But then two books I would recommend to you are these. One is called Under Our Skin. It's written by Ben Watson, and Ben is a a tight end for the Baltimore Ravens. And he's a, a man who's focused on racial reconciliation, and even more deeply than that, on matters of the heart. Because Ben believes that racism at its core is a heart issue under our skin. It's a great read. Second book I'd like to encourage you to read is this, Roadmap to Reconciliation by Brenda Salter McNeil. Roadmap to Reconciliation. The great thing about this book is in every chapter there are practical things that she invites you to do not only personally, but actually to bring to your community, to people around you, so that together we can think through how to be reconcilers. Roadmap to reconciliation. So we start by reading. Secondly, watch. Watch. In one of my emails, I said that it's really important to feel these things. Because oftentimes, it's not until we feel that we're ready to consider change. We've got to feel. One of the best ways to put yourself in a position where you can feel is through stories. And movies and documentaries tell amazing stories. So whether it's Selma about Martin Luther King, whether it's a a movie called Just Mercy about Bryan Stevenson as an attorney and his uh, fight for justice in the South, or whether it's a movie like Brian Banks, great story of a promising high school athlete who's got a scholarship to USC and is falsely accused and ends up spending over a decade in prison, wrongly accused. Those movies invite us in to feel 
And when we feel the layers of our heart that oftentimes are, are crusted over begin to peel away. Read, watch, and then finally, listen. Listen. There's a humility that's involved in listening. When we listen, we admit that we have a need to grow, that we haven't figured it out ourselves. When we listen, we admit that we need the other person to fill in gaps for us and to help us understand in a more broad way what the issues and what the concerns and what the heart matters are. If you have a friend who's a person of color, I would invite you to have the conversation with them that you probably have never had. Simply ask them to tell you their story. Listen. We read, we watch, we listen. That's what we do. That's how it starts. In one of our prayer times at home, after the murder of George Floyd, uh, Julie and I were praying, and, and she said something in her prayer. She was praying as we were praying together, and, and, and she prayed this. She said, Lord, heal us of our blindness. And that phrase just struck me. And so after we finished praying, I, I asked her to tell me more about that, how, how that came to mind. And she said it was in some of her reading that she had done on justice and issues of injustice. And she said in some of her readings, she had learned that one in every four of the miracles that Jesus did was a miracle of restoring sight to someone who is blind. So she just took that whole idea and put it into the prayer, Lord, heal us of our blindness. I think of that blind man on the road leading into Jericho in Luke chapter 18. Jesus is coming into town and he's sitting there begging and, and he hears this commotion. So he begins to ask those around him, what's going on? And they say, Jesus is coming into town. And so he starts to scream at the top of his lungs. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people around him are like, shush, 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 shush. No, but he, loud, he, he shouts even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, hears him and says, what do you want me to do for you? And the man replies, I want to see. I want to see. May that be our ask of Jesus. I want to see. Next week, we're going to talk about Jesus and justice. How did Jesus address the issue of justice? What did he think about it? How did he invite people into that conversation? Where did he challenge us? I invite you to come back and to spend some time around God's word together as students of the word, of ourselves, and of our culture. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. And it does challenge us in places that are disruptive. It unsettles us and makes us uncomfortable. But God, that's what your intent is. It's to search us in ways that show us the stuff that we need to look at. God, we know it was never your intent for us to live this private, personal, isolated faith experience with you. But your intent right from the beginning was for us to reflect your character to the world so that the whole world may know the great and good God that you are. The whole world may know that you're a God of justice. Lord, I pray that we would live that and that we would take that seriously. Lord, may it begin with us this week as we ask those important questions and we ask more than anything else that you would heal our blindness. And that's in Jesus' name, the healer that we pray. Amen. I'm going to close this morning by asking God to open our eyes and having us to go where he would go, to love who he loves, to see who he sees, to reach out to who he puts in our paths. Would you join us as we sing, I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you
note a little longer so I can get up here. Hey, uh, as we've been uh, talking about during the service, we wanted to conclude by praying for some of those who are being impacted or have been impacted by the fires. And so before Mark gets up to do our benediction today, I'd like to invite you to join me and thank you for those who did send in some names. And uh, so would you just join us all as we pray and lift this up in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that you allow us these opportunities to come together wherever we are sitting right now, and even if we're watching and listening at a different point in time. Lord God, we do pray that you would move powerfully to heal, heal in so many ways. Father, we just lift up to you in particular some of these names that have been on people's hearts that they know that have been impacted by what's happening right now, Lord. Just gaily, we lift up to you the Brock family. Peter and Karen Thor, DJ Underwood. Father, a request here for all the firefighters for their strength, for their protection, for their peace, and for their stamina. Lord, we lift up the families of Hope Church in Santa Cruz. And Lord, we pray for protection from lightning strikes over the next few days. Father, we lift up to you James Schultz, who was injured badly in one of the fires. Father, there are so many others, Lord God, that go beyond what we know at this point. But Lord, you know them. Father, we pray for those who are in need of a healing touch physically right now. We pray for those, Lord God, who have lost loved ones or are worried about them, Father. God, we pray for those who have lost property, homes, God, and the devastation that they are feeling. 
those fleeing in evacuation right now, not even knowing what the, what the future may hold. Father, I pray for your comfort and shelter over them. Lord, we pray for those who are standing in, in, in the line of fire, literally, literally, Lord God, because they choose, Lord, to be on that front line to help and to be our protection and shield. Father, we pray that you would be their shield. God, we pray, Father, for even the weather ahead, that you would guard us and guide us through that. Lord, there are many things, God, we are facing right now, smoke in our world. Lord God, we are fighting still this pandemic, Lord, and all the ramifications from school to work, Lord God, to our social environment. Father, we pray there would be a turn for the better soon. Lord, as we've been praying about or teaching about today, the areas of injustice, Lord. God, work in our own hearts, Father. I think of your disciples and how you led them through a lot of really uncomfortable situations, even amongst themselves. Father, you were teaching them as disciples. May we be open to, Lord, to what you want to teach in our hearts. And so, Father, I pray your comfort over all who are suffering and struggling hearing this prayer right now. In their own homes, for their loved ones, I pray for healing, peace, and your power, Lord, to intervene, that your grace is there. And Lord, I pray that we too would be vessels of your comfort to one another and to even those that we don't know yet, that we would be open to your Spirit's leading. So Father, thank you that we could be here together in this time, that you are a holy God and that we have your word, your promises. May we trust in them once again. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, Pastor. Thank you, Mike. Well, thanks for being with us this morning. We're so glad that you were able to join us. And uh, we pray that you do have a great week. We're uh, glad to continue to pray for those affected by the fires. And then pray most especially for us as we continue to, to have those conversations at this important cultural moment. May we uh, be able to unearth some of those deep things in our hearts that are unsettling, but God is calling us to, so that we can side with God and partner with God in demonstrating his character through the world a God of justice and compassion, a God who loves and who heals, a God who's able to open our eyes and give us sight. Have a great week. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.